Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to see you back again in Exotic Astrology. And we discussed on the Navamsha yesterday. And today we are back with another video on the Navamsha, which is actually the nakshatras in the Navamsha. Do they actually work or what should we do? Should we give more importance to the nakshatras of the Lagna chart or the Navamsha chart? Or is there a percentage? Is it like 50-50 or is it 20% uh, for the Navamsha, 80% from the Lagna chart or is it the other way around? Uh, well, or it just doesn't matter or does it matter in some cases or does it not matter in some cases? And uh, does it impact us in our dashas? Uh, and what about transit? So that these are all very important questions and very interesting questions rather which we should discuss, which we generally do not discuss. So that's exactly what we are going to talk today. And as usual, if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it down below. And if you want a consultation from me regarding your career, marriage or relationships or health or spirituality, then you can go to my website, which is also down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will surely find him in the Navamsha or in the D1. <laughs> Okay, so before I begin speaking on Navamsha Nakshatras, it is very important that you understand what a Navamsha is. So uh, I have made a lot of videos, so please please watch them. I have also have a Navamsha playlist, so if you have not watched it, please watch it. And I'm repeating once again, Vishti Larson had come uh, to my channel years back and he also gave a, de gave a detailed session uh, on Navamsha. That playlist is also there. So please watch it. Otherwise, you may not understand much what I'm discussing here. Okay, so the Navamsha chart, as I said uh, in my yesterday's video, it tells us about uh, our self, right? And it tells us about our marriage. It tells us about our spiritual life. It can tell us about our natural inclinations, our uh, interests, our talents, our hobbies. In short, basically who we are, that, that that's what like not externally, but internally who we are as a person. You know, assuming that there was no uh, external constraint in this world, which generally doesn't happen because for that we have the Lagna chart. Uh, but imagine, you know, there was no rule, regulation, restriction or constraint externally. Uh, there was nothing that we were uh, forced to do, then who would we be? That's what is the Navamsha chart indeed. And then we know what are the nakshatras. So the nakshatras are like, um, it's, it's like you zoom into a zodiac sign and you try to understand the story. That's what a nakshatra is. So therefore, when a planet is placed in a particular nakshatra, then it is highly probable that this planet uh, can experience the desires related to that planet, which is seen from the lordships and the placement of the house um, through the story and the energy of the nakshatra. Okay, So, for example, if uh, your any planet is sitting in Pushya nakshatra, for example, now, Pushya Nakshatra is related to Brihaspati, uh, it, uh, although it's the Nakshatra lauded by Saturn, but it has to do with, you know, um, teaching, learning, education and all this. So, so for example, if, if your um, seventh lord is in Pushya Nakshatra, for example, then uh, you might uh, have to teach so many things to your spouse or your spouse may end up teaching you so many things or you both may teach each other okay or you may learn uh, even if they don't teach you may somehow learn okay so after marriage you might go and get a higher education or you might delve into spiritual topics and all so that that's how it happens all although it's not as simple as i just said but for beginners that's how you can understand okay so the planet and the the, the lordship uh, which which is uh given to a planet that is the responsibility and the nakshatra tells the story okay and then we have the nature of the planet so so for example if your uh, mercury is the seventh lord and he's uh deposited uh, he's placed in pushya nakshatra you know then these things which i said will hold true but along with that 
the nature of the learning will be a bit mercurial. Okay, so there will be a lot of writing, there can be a lot of talks and exchanges. So which itself is like, you know, Mercury is also the Karaka for education along with Jupiter. So that, that's like, uh, it's forgiven that there will be writing and there will be exchanged exchanges. Okay, so, and if that planet is something else, then uh, it will have another flavor. Okay, Now you come to the Navamsha where you are seeing Planets are placed in certain nakshatras. So in Navamsha, planet is in a zodiac sign, in a house. And then within that also, that, that planet is in a particular nakshatra. But here is one caution I would like to give you. Uh, in case of Navamsha nakshatras, you, you have to really be very sure of the birth time. Because if not, then the nakshatras can change uh, in the Navamsha very frequently. Okay, so... Uh, whenever you are doing a uh, birth time rectification, it's very good if you use the Navamsha nakshatras because that can very easily tell you if the birth time is correct or not. Okay, and birth time rectification should be done in general, but it can't be literally done all the time. So if you are not confident about your birth time, then please do birth time rectification before doing a consultation. That is very essential. Otherwise, it's it's of not much use okay so now we have the navamsha which tells us about our inner self and then there are the, there are the nakshatras okay which actually tell the story so basically the navamsha nakshatras can tell us how we react to certain things in life okay so for example if a particular planet is in pushya nakshatra for example in the navamsha then what can happen is we may feel the need to learn something. We may feel the need to educate somebody or get educated. Okay, uh, But suppose now the seventh lord in the Lagna chart is not placed in Pushya. It is placed in Jeshta Nakshatra. So let's, let's imagine, you know, though there's a planet, you have your D1 chart. The seventh lord is placed in Jeshta Nakshatra. Okay. But... The seventh lord of your Navamsha chart is placed in Pushya Nakshatra. Okay. Not the same planet, not the seventh lord of D1, but the seventh lord of D9 now is placed in Pushya Nakshatra, as we know. <clears throat> so, what does it mean? So, it, it simply means that after marriage, you might have a desire. Okay, let, I, I think there are certain things which we are missing in life. You know, maybe it can be anything, you know, how to uh, get our finances together or how to be healthy or whatever it can be you know how to start our spiritual journey or how to lead a good married life or you know how to have uh, a good uh, family life you know with children uh, all, all these things you, you might feel the desire but now because in the d1 uh, this planet is uh, here the seventh lord is not in pushya he's in jeshtha nakshatra so now what happens is your inner inner desire is actually uh, the the desire of Pushya Nakshatra, which is you know to learn and to teach. But now, what is Jeshtha Nakshatra? Jeshtha Nakshatra is about envy, competition, um, leadership, trying to lord over, uh, trying to boss over, and also it can be you know to take good leadership and do a lot of good things in life, or uh, difficult things. But you somehow. Uh, navigate through all the difficulties, challenges, trials, tribulations. Okay, that's what Jeshtha is. So it's not a very uh, smooth nakshatra. It's not a very rosy nakshatra to handle. Okay, so if you have planets in Jeshtha, the journey can be a, a bit tough sometimes. Okay, but that doesn't mean you are a criminal. Sometimes people, they, oh, he has Jeshtha, oh, moon is in Jeshtha, he must be a criminal, he must be a womanizer or something. No, absolutely not. So now what happens is, when you go to activate the things related to Pushya Nakshatra, which is like your own self, because that's coming from the Navamsha. Now what happens is, when you are trying to do something with your spouse, then you run into competition with your spouse. Or if the seventh lord is in Jeshtha in the Lagna chart, but is connected to Dusthana houses, then it can happen that after your marriage, when you do some higher education or something like that, 
then you run into some problems with authorities you run into some problems with competition you know you are defeated by somebody or you defeat somebody you know so it can be the ways but you will face some competition likely so that the d1 can say but why will you face the competition because at the first place it was your desire to go and get some uh, knowledge or to learn about something okay so that that was the primary reason why this thing happened at the end of the day okay so therefore this is how you can analyze now the question is does it uh, impact us in our dashas well well absolutely does so for example if you are having a uh, mercury mahadasha for example so you have to see what mercury is lording in the lagna chart so he is the 10th lord for example and so he is saying you know there will be gains related to career so and so blah 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 okay but what is mercury uh, doing in the navamsha chart you know which nakshatra is he placed so if your mercury mahadasha is going on and mercury is in the 10th house in d1 uh, but in the navamsha chart he is placed in uh, pushya nakshatra for example again so then this can mean that you can get a uh, good job a better job a high paying job but you will have to upgrade yourself or you may get the job for trainer or somebody like that okay so the navamsha nakshatras will actually tell you what do you want to do and the d1 nakshatras will tell you what will happen at the end of the day okay so now these are not uh, they are not disjunct you know they are like complementary eventually they become complementary so for example uh, if you uh, have mercury in 10th house and mahadasha comes for example then you get get some good job or promotion or something nadasha but if mercury is in pushya in your d9 then you even though you get it you will feel oh maybe i have to upgrade my skill set you know i have to learn i have to take guidance from my mentor or some senior person in the company you know somebody has to act like your guide and counselor uh, then you will have rapid progress so initially the nakshatra in the navamsha may not matter much okay so initially it does it doesn't mean you have to first learn train for six months only then you get the job because if it is in the 10th house of the d1 you may get the job even if you have no talent sometimes it happens but uh, in the long run the navamsha nakshatra will always uh, have the weightage okay now again that doesn't mean the d1 nakshatra is dismissed so there is no 50 50 here there's no 10 20 there's no 20 80 or 10 90 90 10 there's no ratio here both work 100 percent okay and yes in the dashas they work and in the transits also they can work uh, but anyways transits are not very important uh, in perspective of, of vedic astrology uh, but for dashas 100 percent it works okay so therefore see the lagna chart the lagna charts uh, nakshatra and the lordships will tell you the responsibilities of the planet and how the story will pan out externally but the need will come from the navamsha chart all right so do not ignore nakshatras in the navamsha chart okay Thank you very much once again and if you are new to the channel please subscribe to it down below if you like this video hit the thumbs up and share it with somebody who wants to know about Navamsha Nakshatras and if you want a consultation you will find my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time irrespective of which planets are there in which Nakshatras in your Navamsha just look to him and you will surely find him. Thank you.